over this. So um, the main important thing, guys, whenever you're determining the LCD or anything else, Vanessa, the first important thing you guys want to do is if there's something that you can factor, go ahead and look at a factor, unless you're Jason, which you want to look up here. <laughs> so I can see here, I, wanna, I see a trinomial that I'm going to want to factor. And basically, Amy, what I'll do is I put negative 2 up here and negative 1. And I want to determine what two numbers multiply to give me negative 2, add to give me a positive or a negative 1. And you guys can see the factors are going to be negative 2 and positive 1. So I'm going to rewrite this as my factored form as x minus 2 times x plus 1. Does everybody see what I did? I just factored it. Okay. Now, here's where it gets very, this is where a lot of students get confused. So I'm going to try to make sure I can explain this to you. And then if you have any questions like Tierra, um, I can re respond to them. So um, when we were adding and subtracting, we had to have common denominators, right? So to get common denominators, I multiplied by um, what we called multipliers to get the same denominators so I can combine them. Here, we're trying to solve. What we're trying to do is eliminate. We're trying to eliminate denominators. We don't want any fractions. So to eliminate fractions, we're still going to determine the LCD, which by determining the LCD in this case is going to be x minus 2 times x plus 1. Does everybody see how this is x minus 2 times x plus 1? OK. So in, I don't want, yes, guys, could you add these together? Yes, of course you can. But then you still have fractions. I don't want any fractions. So to get rid of fractions, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply my LCD times everything. So I have x plus 1 times x minus 2. x plus 1 times x minus 2. x plus 1 times x minus 2. So when you're adding and subtracting fractions with unlike denominators, you've got to add on the top and bottom so you can combine them, so you have common denominators, because we're trying to group them together. In solving, we're trying to eliminate. So you're just going to take your LCD and multiply it by everything. What that does now is now those divide out, those divide out, and those divide out. So now, basically, what I have is an equation that looks like this. 4 times x plus 1 minus 3 times x minus 2 is equal to 8. But what I want you guys to see is by doing that, look what I just did with my equation. I'm trying to now solve an equation that doesn't have any fractions in it. right? So if you find the LCD and multiply everything by the LCD, Tyler, you now have an equation with no fractions. And do you guys feel a little bit more comfortable solving something that looks like this? Yeah, you should. We've done these before. We started this one we started at the beginning of the year with. So therefore, this is 4x plus 4 minus 3x plus 6 equals 8. Then uh, negative, you got to make sure it's a negative 3 times negative 2, which would be positive 6. So just make sure you combine those and those. So therefore, I'm left with x plus 10 equals 8. Subtract 10, subtract 10. x equals negative 2. Now. Very, very important that once you guys get your answer for an equation, that we go back and we check our answer to make sure that it works. Because when we look up here, again, guys, we want to look at what the problem cannot be, right? Remember we talked, remember we did all these constraints, right? So in this example, though, we know that x cannot equal positive 2 and negative 1, right? Because those would make the denominator 0. So is my answer 2 or negative 1? No. So therefore, we're good. Okay. If your answer is one of those, then it'd be no solution. 